Oh, welcome to the question on affability from uh, the question 114 of the Secunda Secundae. I'm Dr. Siegel. If we start with the catechism of uh, affability, uh, the closest thing that we get to it is this issue of solidarity. Under the section of social responsibility, uh, a quote is taken from Pope John Paul II, which said, uh, the principle of solidarity also articulated in terms of friendship or social charity is a direct command of, of human and Christian brotherhood. So this is the uh, this is the closest we get to it. This idea of affability is synonymous with the idea of friendship. This friendship and uh, affability uh, is connected specifically to its relationship to uh, society. There's a lot of ways of having friendship, uh, but this idea of friendliness or affability is specific to its social life. Uh, and I think St. Thomas writes about this very scarcely. <laughs> uh, there's not a lot of uh, paragraphs to this section, but he's relying heavily on Aristotle. So I think to really fill in the gaps with what our, what St. Thomas is re uh, responding to, we have to look to uh, the, the original text, uh, both from the Nicomachean ethics and also uh, Eudaimonian eth ethics as well. Um, uh, according to Aristotle, uh, it is a mean. Uh, it, it makes it a uh, moral virtue because it, it focuses on the mean. In excess, uh, one can be abundantly pleasant uh, for no reason other than they really love to be pleasant. <laughs> uh, so if you want trying to be pleasant for the sake of being pleasant, um, uh, that, then that's an excess. If a person uh, is trying to be pleasant in order to get some type of material gain or honor, then it's also an excess because uh, it's not uh, based in truth, but it's based in uh, trying to create an illusion. And then it also can be a deficiency if a person is just disagreeable for the sake of being disagreeable. You know, they, they start fights and they, uh, they, they pull things down just for the sake of pulling things down. Uh, maybe something like the, the Debbie Downer. Uh, no matter how good it is for others, you need to pull it down. So there's excesses and deficiency. Correct affability would be the mean, the golden mean. Um, and St. Thomas said, there's those, um, it belongs to a wise man to share in honest pleasures with those with whom he dwells. One should, one should try to get along with the people he lives with within society. Uh, that's a goal. We want to get along with the people we are, that we should live with in society. But he thinks also the golden mean should also have some restrictions. We shouldn't just get along with everyone all the time, um, you know, and, and be, being in, in an encouraging way uh, when not everything should be encouraged. Um, he said, we should not show a cheerful face to those who are given in sin in order that we may please them, lest we seem to consent to their sinning and encourage them further. So if we encourage people in the wrong direction by seemingly uh, going along with it, uh, we could be uh, making things worse. Um, one of these people I, 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 who I studied with out in Berkeley, California, there was a, a, there was a man who ran a clinic, uh, a center to help inner city, particularly black youth, uh, and he was a black man himself, and he said, the stupidest things adults do is they listen to some kid say this terrible thing like, oh yeah, I got to be in a gang, and I got to get my get it together, and I got to get the money, and I got to get this, and I got to get this, all of which is terrible ideas. <laughs> and what do the adult do trying to be supportive and, and a good listener? They nod their head in agreement. By nodding your head in agreement, what you're saying is, that, yeah, that's what, that all makes sense. Sell drugs and join a gang. <laughs> and he would say that what an adult should do is they should look at the kid, uh, you know, and say, what on earth are you saying? That's a terrible idea. <laughs> because we don't want to, we want to be uh, a good friend to people. We want to be affable to people, but we also want to point them in the right direction. He said, there's three ways of being friendly, and I think we have to look, uh, again, Aristotle for this one, um, by 
we can be friends with people because of their virtue. You know, if we have a friend who they're a very generous friend, they're a good friend, uh, they go to church and they help the poor and they're a good person to be around. You know, that's why we want to be friends with them is because they're a good person. They have a, a lot of great virtues. Uh, you know, that would be a sign of a good friend, you know, somebody you would want to keep close to you. Um, well, that makes sense. Those would be people who you would be in a relationship with in a more intimate way, a deep way, because those are the people who, who you would choose to be in a relationship with. Then there's other types of friendships based on social need. Maybe somebody you work with, somebody uh, who lives next to you. Um, you know, you don't always choose your neighbors. You don't always choose who you work with. Uh, there's people who are just living within your town. You know, you didn't necessarily choose who you live in your town with, but they are your neighbors and you depend on them. You're paying taxes together. Uh, you might be on uh, in a baseball league together. You, you know, you're, you're working with them. They're not people you necessarily choose to be in relationship with, but they're people who are uh, you socially need. And then there's people, lastly in the last category, uh, are based on pleasure. Uh, maybe they they give you pleasure in some way, uh, waiter or waitress. They could be a cook. They could be uh, somehow useful to us. They they do things that makes our, makes our lives better. Um, but, you know, there's things in their own lives where you might not choose to actually be friends with them on an intimate level, but you have a, there is a social element, there's a pleasure element. Um, um, you might not know about what they do when they're not uh, at work and doing things to help you. Um, Aristotle says the best of these is, uh, for, is Friendships based on virtue. And so, if you were, had more self sufficiency, then, then you don't need to rely on your society as much. You don't have to depend on pleasure as much because you're, you're self sufficient. Uh, Aquinas doesn't talk about that. Um, Aquinas, in this section on affability, though, is kind of focusing more on this category number two, the utility based one. Because um, he's really talking about friendliness in terms of, in terms of society as a virtue. Uh, this is a civic friendship, as, he, as Aristotle points out. Um, and one of the questions is, does it require a special virtue? Now, this idea of a special virtue is not really in our regular parlance anymore. Uh, but a general vir virtue is just having all of the virtues um, moves us in a right direction. It's... Uh, it's a, a complete body moving towards perfection, right? It, we want to develop all the virtues and they all work together and they all move us in the right direction. A special virtue is a virtue needed in a particular way. So a king might have a special virtue of justice because their job is to rule and to ru be a good ruler. Specifically, you need all the virtues, but specifically you need that virtue of justice when you're going to be a, a king or a judge, for example, right? A, a judge needs all of the virtues, but particularly justice. If they don't have justice, then they're not going to be a very good judge. Well, what is the special virtues we need um, to be in society? You know, in general, we need all of these virtues just to be good friends with one another. But in a special way to be part of a society, we need the justice, uh, the uh, we need to have the virtue of justice and affability in a particular way. And our relationship with individuals needs to be in a particular way, not just in general uh, friendly towards one another. But like a clock, we each have a role within the cogs, right? Uh, all cogs in a watch aren't the same size. They don't move at the same speed. They're not in the same location. If they were, the clock wouldn't work. You know, the clock being our, our community, our society. We each have our spot, we each have our role, we each have our function, we have our own speed, we have our own size. A clock works because it's specific, not because it's general. The same way civic friendships have to be specific. You know, the trash collection people have a specific role, the politician has a specific role, a teacher has a specific role. So our relationship to society really works from dozens and dozens of specific relationships. And because specific goodnesses exist, then you need specific 
graces, <laughs> specific virtues for each of those. So the virtue you need in your married life is not necessarily the, vir the same virtue as in being a parent. And it's a different virtue when being a good neighbor and a different virtue when you have your friends and a different virtue when being a boss and a different virtue in terms of being in a, in a, as a citizen. And states have different virtues they need with other states in their relationship. The relationship with, between Rhode Island and Massachusetts is different than Rhode Island and uh, California and different between Rhode Island and France, right? These are specific uh, relationships which have specific goodnesses, which have specific virtues that are needed for those relationships. And I think this isn't too much of a stretch because uh, the, the specific idea is coming out of the ancient world. So uh, Aristotle is writing this from the Greek perspective, but right next door you have the Roman perspective. And out of the Roman uh you, out of the Roman perspective, you have amicitia, which is this word for friendliness in, in the Latin, amicitia. Uh, and it's a technical term within Roman political life, friendship. Uh, the amicitia amici populi romani, which uh, is those who are friends of the Roman people, you know, the neighbors of the Roman people who are friendly. They had a tabula uh, amici corium, uh, which was a table of friendly neighbors, you know, a list of friends. Uh, they called the amici Augusti, uh, which was the uh, the friends of Augustus, uh, who was the, who were the imperial court. So this idea of friendship wasn't a casual thing. It wasn't you go out with your friend for a beer. <laughs> it was these are formal relationships about proper ordering of relationships, people who you can trust, people who the relationship has been formalized in some way, and there's responsibilities and benefits to these formal relationships. So I think it's important that we realize that this, uh, and Thomas is talking about with friendship, under this category of justice, right, this is, this is, there's other types of friendship, but under the category of justice, uh, amicitia is the, is the type of friendship he's talking about, civic friendship, civic affability, is easier to say than amicitia. <laughs> um, Saint Pi uh, Pope Pius XII, maybe someday Saint Pope Pius XII, uh, wrote about this in 1941. He said, for 2,000 years, uh, this sentiment has lived and endured in the souls of the church, impelling souls then and now to heroic charity of monastic farmers, liberators of slaves, healers of the sick, messengers of faith, uh, civilization and science to all generations and all peoples for the sake of creating social conditions capable of offering to everyone the possible, the pos everyone possible, a life worthy of man and of a Christian. He's talking about this civic affability of, that the church has uh, focused on for the last uh, 2000 years, uh, this friendliness that the church has offered, liberating slaves and uh, monastic farmers and uh, creating a, a friendliness among all peoples. That This has been the goal of the church, is this civic affability. Um, the civic friendship rooted in justice is very important in uh, both uh, Aristotle and Aquinas talk about this, this idea that and Aristotle says it specifically, justice and friendship are either identical or very close to each other. People cannot be friends with one another if they have been wronged and treated, wrongly treated uh, by each other. And uh, what is the benefit in the, in the abstract is not the same as uh, that which is beneficial in a, to a particular individual. This idea that uh, for there to be civic friendship, for there to be friendship among the members of society, there has to be justice. Because if there has been injustice, then there cannot be friendship. It's hard to be have uh, civic peace, civic friendliness, when there is injustice going on within that society. Um, that line, no justice, no peace, <laughs> that you see at rallies is, is strongly connected with this idea of justice and affability. Uh, 
we can't uh, we can't just be friends with one another if there's racial injustice, when there's gender injustice, uh, when there's social injustice, it's hard to say, well, let's just all get along. Uh, we need to really work on the justice element in order for the affability part to come about. And uh, Aquinas, he talks about this in terms of if we're dealing with justice, we're dealing with the scales of equality. Um, and when equity has been thrown off, when there is a debt in equity, when there's an imbalance in justice, um, it is difficult for us to get along and to live in an affable society. Uh, he says, man is a social animal and owes to his fellow man equity, uh, the manifestation of truth, equity, the manifestation of truth, uh, without which human society could not last. When we don't live in a society of equity, we live in a uh, disordered society, and it won't it, it will self destruct. Which I think in the last year or so, I will, we've seen elements of this <laughs> in reality. Uh, when there's been inequities, society attacks itself from within, and we certainly have lacked in the last year or so affability, that friendliness between members of our society. Uh, we have had civic disunity. Uh, but this is all a, a, a failure of the of, of justice. It's all a failure of affability. Um, lastly, uh, Aquinas at the end, his, his last objections, I think they do a lot to kind of bring it to a conclusion. He says a natural equity obliges a man to live agreeably with his fellow men, uh, unless for some reason, uh, reason should oblige him to sadden them for their for their own good. Uh, we should get, try to get along. We should try not to quarrel with one another. We should try to be agreeable to one another. But he gives the uh, the caveat. But if we should, but if reason requires it, we might have to sadden one another by telling the truth if it's for their good. <laughs> we tell the truth not for our own good, he said, but for their good. If we have to tell them uh, something for their own good, then uh, this could be uh, the reason. And I think the church probably would look at abortion in, in this way. It would be nice for the church to get along, but in the issue of abortion, sometimes the church has to be disagreeable in order to say this truth for their own good. Um, how to say it might be a different, different uh, topic, but the church can't not say it in order to just be agreeable. Uh, sometimes the church has to be disagreeable when reason requires it. Uh, one can have friends which are, which are chosen out of virtue uh, or pleasure, but one must have civic friendships or affability as well. Uh, and and, I, and that's, a, that's the more difficult one, <laughs> that we have the civic affability. Uh, and that, that's the main focus of this section. Uh, and we, we ought to behave towards all in a fitting manner through the use of special virtue, right? We have to realize that how we treat one another might be different based on our relationship to those people uh, and to require, it might require special virtue. Uh, I think is all we have to say about affability and, uh, and friendship for now, right now. Our next sections are on um, flattery and uh, quarreling. So we have some interesting topics ahead in the, in the area of justice.